Okay. Oh, all right, then. How's it, how's it going, Tom? You all right? It's going good. How are you, my friend? Yeah, not too good, mate. Been pretty depressed and frustrated by that shambolic performance that took place today at Old Trafford. Once again, not capable of scoring a goal. Yeah, no, I know. Shocking. You know what's more shocking? This is why my mind's completely gone after this game. And I might, in a day, I might have a different opinion on this. Do you know who's to blame for this? The board. No. Go on. You. <laughs> what do you mean? You're to, bl- you're to blame and every other Man United fan like you that piles on ridiculous expectations and pressures on a football team. The team hasn't lost in five games till today, but every game's a must-win game. Everything's a boo. It's like fucking watching England. Excuse my language. It's like watching England in the 90s and early 2000s. If we weren't one-nil up at half-time, it's booing. That's ridiculous. That's a shambles. That's a joke. Every Man United fan right now uh, is complete embarrassment to be honest with you. You've got this world-class manager in, but he doesn't play the style of football you play. Give him a bit of time. Oh, he's had 18 months. 18 months is nothing. Like, we've had this discussion time and time again. It's a shambles. It's, it's the fan base's fault. This is... They're sucking the life out of the team. They're sucking the life out of the players. They are completely just... The this is completely... Ridiculous. That's complete bollocks. It's a joke. No, no, no. I bet... Come on, you've got, you've got the... the I can sort of see what you're saying because we are the, the fan pressure no, is getting on them. Yeah, but no, no, no. It's, it's really that doesn't close. dictate the way they play. That doesn't dictate the way... They haven't lost in Louis, five games up until today. Louis van Gaal sets it aside. That doesn't matter if they haven't lost. They've played shit. We should be winning five Beat out of Liverpool five. Beat Liverpool last week. Spent Why 250 no? million pounds. Oh, come on. That game was a complete travesty, really. We were Did so they happy. Win? We, won the, we won the game and we were... It was a miracle that we won that game. So they battered us. David De Gea is the only reason we won that game. Okay, still won the game. We won the game, yeah. All you're going to remember is the win and losses. And, okay, they lost today. But, again, we've had seasons like this before under Fergie, but everything is fine. This needs to be a two-part call because I really do want to speak to you about Baltimore and sitting in with Rennie Mullenstein for the morning um, and hearing what he had to say about kind of his philosophy and what his time at Man United was like and the way they played and how it's different to now. He didn't criticize the way they played now, but he said that him and Alex, Sir Alex, you know, would sit down a lot and they would use these different charts and these different graphs and all this. And it's really interesting. It's not that high tech, but it's interesting. The foundation of every decision Sir Alex made kind of came back to like these, these different charts. And it, it was just fascinating to hear this guy speak. But I'm going to say that, yeah, maybe he should go because the fan base probably don't deserve Van Gaal right now. I don't know who the fan base deserve. They deserve... I, I'm shocked, really, to be honest with you, how fickle the masses are. I don't are think, I don't, I don't, hang on, what are you? I used to be really proud to be a Man United fan. Just let me speak. Let me get this all out. Fuck please. You know. um, and then I'll, I'll listen to you. I used to be really proud to be a Man United fan. After the 68 uh, disaster, hadn't won a trophy in 24 years. 58. Extremely loyal. Everything through the 90s. I'm sorry, 58. They won the European Cup in 68. Uh, didn't win the league for 24 years. Did win a trophy. So I was wrong. Thank you for correcting me. Um, yeah, don't, don't want anybody to think you're a mug or nothing. You know what I mean? No, no, you're <laughs> fine. Um, so, I, you know, I was, used to be so proud. I mean, I think the players always like the Arsenal. The, you know what I was thinking today? Arsenal is still suffering from Ashley Cole throwing pizza. Arsenal is still suffering from cheating on the pitch. They still are because... They've never got past that. You've got, to, uh, you've got to show sportsmanship. You've got to show dignity. You've got to show all these things that Arsenal in the early 2000s just went out the window. And that's why Wenger's suffered ever since. Um, you just can't get by with uh, not, not behaving appropriately. The United fans, I was so proud to be a United fan. Stuck for a team through thick and thin. But did we really? Because we had so much success all the time. I mean, did we really? And now you've got clowns. Just going off on Van Gaal, this, this guy that's won all these trophies and been successful everywhere. Oh, he's rubbish. He's a moron. He's a moron? Really? He's a moron. That doesn't make any sense. Have you finished? I've finished. Keep speaking because I'm eating an m and All right. <laughs> um, no, I just think that what you, what, we're going to put Ryan Giggs in charge. I mean, Sedan, I know there's been a kickback effect and he might be very good. 
I've had this conversation about how ridiculous Who it was. Who says we're going to put Ryan Giggs in charge, though? Rafa was sitting there. We could be putting, there's, you know, Pep Guardiola in charge, Jose Mourinho in charge. There's Somebody massive rumours going on that look, I've read. I don't think, the week let, old. Let, let me just respond I've, to what I've you I've heard what, that Ferguson's, yeah. Let me just respond to your rant earlier, OK? So, basically, you, you're calling us United fans fickle for wanting LVG out, but he's had a ridiculous amount of money, a ridiculous amount of time, and uh, the... the the results, and it's not even about the results, really. It's just about the performances. I can honestly say about only about two games out of the last 20 games from Manchester United have actually been to an acceptable level where we've played good enough football in terms of creating chances, attacking football, actually just going for it. You know, the mentality that we have at the club right now is just completely defensive and... and uh, different. Yeah. It's, it's totally different, but it's not even effective, Tom. We're not getting results, so... If it's not entertaining... We didn't lose in five games before today, but okay. Well, did we win all those games, did we? Uh, we beat Liverpool. Did we, we perform in all those drew, games? We scored three away at Newcastle. Um, yeah, and we conceded three and, and threw the game away from 2-0 up. I thought we were too defensive. When has that ever happened? Sorry. Sorry, we, I thought we were too defensive. Well, if we if we weren't too defensive, we'd have outscored them, wouldn't we? <laughs> the, po- the point is, we, we're, not yeah, getting the type of fo- we're not getting the type of football that we deserve. You guys don't deserve anything right now. I'm telling you this. Man United defend, uh, defense. Man United fans do not deserve a thing right now. If they're anything like you. All right. right. How about supporting? How about getting behind? Not saying Moyes out, wrong one. Flying planes. Van Gaal's, uh, you know, needs to go. The staff plays boring. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you're an idiot, You don't, you don't deserve <laughs> yes, a thing. No. You don't deserve a thing. You, you, you don't understand it, though. The reason one Southampton is what you deserve right now, pal. You don't understand it. You, you, you are destroying this club right now. You. If not you Mangal, don't make the changes the board, to Manchester United. Not the players. United. It's the fans. You, if you, you do not expect them to score every half. And it's, 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 it's sucking the life out of them. I've seen it with children. I've seen it with adults. When you, that confidence, you can suck the life out of people. They should play in an empty stadium right now. They shouldn't allow fans in there. They don't deserve to be in there. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't disagree more with you because. Good. I'm glad that you disagree. I'm glad you couldn't disagree more. It's interesting. I like it. Well, That's the, my opinion. You don't. Well, the point is, you, right you, now. you say you say we're not getting by the club and supporting the club. The point is, we do support the club. We care about the club. We don't want it to be. Uh, driven by somebody who's not going to get it to where it should be. He's not going to improve it. All that's happening right now is it's a slow descent. We are getting worse and worse. And we, we're spending more money. He's had more time. He's had plenty of time to turn this all around and get us playing the right football, you know. We're not attacking teams, Tom. Another game today, the we right had one football? shot on What's target. The, Last week, we had one shot on target. Me, How are we having one shot me. on target? No, no, hang on, let me speak. How are you having one shot on target at Old Trafford? not scoring any goals whatsoever consistently. We've had one shot on target today. We had one shot against Liverpool. Luckily, we scored it. It's a complete farce. This is not how we're supposed to play football. Even if we lose if, if we lose 6-2, I don't mind as long as we're attacking the whole the whole entirety of the game. Yeah. Especially at home. You know, this is different if you're going away. And all that but at home at Old Trafford, to have gone 11 games without scoring a single goal in the first half, scoring a handful of games. I think we scored nine goals at Old Trafford so far this season. To put that in perspective, Liverpool scored five away at Norwich today. We're just not scoring any goals, not scoring at home. How is how is that acceptable? How can you put up with that? All that's going to happen is we're going to keep going downhill. We're not going to qualify for Champions League. We'll probably finish seventh. We've spent all this money. We've got a man in charge. We may get put different players in that are just not right for the club. Half of his signings have been complete failures. He's not succeeded what at signs? Manchester United. Okay. Two questions for you. Define, I, I want you to go after this. Okay. Two questions. Define the right way to play, first of all, um, because it doesn't exist. So I want to see you. There's, menta- there's, a, there's a mentality, Tom, that the Alex okay. Ferguson era was all about trying to win. And that, win by, right win at all okay. costs. Towards the end of the games, we'd be pining on pressure. I know. It was about we'll winning. About it was so all about winning. Info into this. We'll have a chat about it. And, and number two. With winning number comes two, goals. You said half his, trans- uh, half his signings were terrible. Go on. Memphis Depay has been absolutely terrible. What an awful, awful perf- you know, performer he's been since he's come in. Dreadful. £26 million, pounds, not perform whatsoever. His golden boy last year looked like the Cristiano Ronaldo of the Dutch League. Come over to here, Louis van Gaal can't get a freaking squeeze of piss out of him. Yeah. Okay. Didn't sign uh, a centre-back. Schwein- Schweinsteiger's a bad signing. Schweinsteiger's a good signing. David Lind is a bad signing. 
No, they're not bad signings. Luke Shaw's a bad you signing. You asked me to tell you a bad signing. And, uh, you I t- you managed to name one. Who <laughs> has, actually, I think he has a lot of promise. So I, I think, think he's got a lot of promise as well, but he's not... He's not you performing. know, you want me to tell you some bad signings? Cal Paborski. Jordi Kroos. They're bad signings, pal. I don't know about that, mate. I thought they were all right at the time. Yeah, yeah, I bet you did. I bet you did. You know what? <laughs> what, what because we, you were blown. They're squad players. Oh, at the yeah, end because of the day. they win the league every they're year. They're squad players, you know. They're right. squad players. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave this conversation. You, you could have said better. I'm gonna try and call you back today, and we're gonna talk completely about my time. No, we need Baltimore to talk. We need to talk. Rennie I don't really give a oh. shit about that, mate. We need to talk about your freaking stance on Manchester United and how bollocks that that is. Because I don't. You know. Understand. You know what bollocks is? Bollocks is the fan base. That's what bollocks is. That's not that's the, the fan base is the whole reason there is a football club there. Right, and they're letting themselves down. I don't know about that, Tom. It's got to a stage. There's a limit. There's a there's a, it's got, there's a, there's a limit. There's, a, tip in, there's, there's a, a tipping limit. point. Yeah, uh, I'm not proud to be a Man United fan after watching your last video. Just saying, so you know. I'm not proud that you're a Manchester United fan either. <laughs> <laughs> Christ Almighty, this is. This is not this is not the sort of confrontational conversation I needed after watching that dribble. To be fair, yeah. So uh, yeah. So you 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 too, you're busy now, are you? I'll, I'll, I'll leave you uh, talking, yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. I've got to I've got to do a. <laughs> we'll try and talk later. I was joking about that Baltimore thing. It'd be interesting to find out about all that, but um, yeah. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I think that you you know would be interesting for Man United fans, especially right now. Considering the way they are playing and what Ronnie Mullenstein said about the differences and the differences that he thinks are going on in training right now uh, from a man that led training every day for about seven years at the you know Carrington. Could you just tell, uh, the, tell the, the listeners what this actually is, this thing that happened in Baltimore? Okay, so I went down to the National Soccer Coaches of America's convention. It's a very big thing. I go down, well, been down the last two years. I went down to Baltimore. Never go to Baltimore if you can help it, but the convention <laughs> was fantastic. Um, went in, watched a bunch of sessions. There was a lot of good stuff. Uh, I sat in with Stuart Pearce and Abraham Grant one day talking about, you know, managing a club, managing teams. Watched a lot of field sessions. Uh, the best one was from the U19 uh, Germany international coach. I thought he was amazing. There was a couple of Scottish lads that were brilliant, actually. Um, the Germans really seemed to have, I watched another German, they seemed to have a lot figured out. It's just some of the stuff. It's, uh, it's completely anti-Pep Guardiola type tactics as well, which I love. Because I don't like to be bored to tears. Um, so um, there was a lot of great stuff. And then Sunday morning from 8.30 to 1.30, uh, about 20 guys got to spend the morning with Rennie Mullenstein and um, just go over the, the, the coaching part of it. wasn't great, but a two and a half hour seminar was fascinating. You can see how smart he is. You can see how you know he was able to coach at the, the highest possible level. And Robin Van Persie called him the best uh, coach there is in the world. Uh, I don't think he can manage people. I think that's where probably why he and Ferguson was such a great combination. <laughs> um, yeah. It was, but it was just, it was fat. So it was a fantastic. Fair enough, mate. Sounds interesting. Well, we'll elaborate on that uh, another time then. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, well, thanks, thanks for the chat. If anybody's got anything to say about any of the things either of us have said, a lot of things to say below, and they can slate me and go at me all they want, and my side. But have a real think about history have a real think about what the club manchester united stands for have a real think about what actually is the right thing that you should be doing as a manchester united fan now and it isn't what your video was 20 minutes ago what are you talking about <laughs> anyway let, let us know all what right. you think below all right cheers cheers mate have, have a good cheers, one mate. speak to you bye soon bye